issues, and then I'd like to comment on the pork barrel issue uh, because this uh, forum is so is so timely. No? Um, first, on the simplification of streamlining uh, of procedures, just to provide you some context, uh, the key measure for this is the World Bank IFC's Ease of Doing Business uh, report, uh, which is released every year. The next one will be released in October 29th of this year. And where we have ranked, uh, we currently rank 138th in the world out of 185. Uh, we have not made any movement in the last three years. We have been 134, 136, 138. Every time IFC World Bank adds countries to the, uh, uh, or economies to the list, we continue to drop down that list. So we are always same distance from the bottom on this list. Uh, in the world rankings, we track it against ASEAN to see where we are, and you can see that uh, we do rather poorly in ASEAN. Uh, you can see that the, even the adjusted scores from 2011, uh, 134, 136, 138, no movement. Uh, ranking has been steady, at the, consistent at least, at the bottom of the list, okay? So we want to get out of that consistency and break out of the bottom of that list. Our goal in all our competitiveness indicators is to move to the top one-third of the world, from the bottom third. We used to be in the bottom 20% of most of the indices, and we, have worked our, we want to work our way up to the top third or the top quartile. How do we do this? Um, we, there are 10 indicators to start to ease of doing business, uh, what we call the life cycle of uh, business as they go through uh, uh, some of the basic uh, government uh, uh, transactions, you know, from starting a business, so that's incorporation, to closing a business. We have benchmarks, so this busy chart tells you what, how each of the countries rank globally for each of the indicators. So for instance, in starting a business, we are 161st in the world on the complexity and the tediousness to start and incorporate a business, versus number four for Singapore globally. Number one, I believe, is uh, New Zealand. No? So we, ranked, uh, we took a look at all the rankings to see the benchmarks so we can figure out what is it that we want to do. And we, uh, I told the staff that there is no point in battling from, you know, going from number eight to number seven. Okay? That is not competition. Uh, we have to be looking at who are the top three uh, in the region or in the world and go for those targets and not fight for number seven or number six. That's not worth our... Uh, time or, or money. Okay? So what did we do? We developed a game plan for competitiveness looking at these numbers. We created the uh, ease of doing business task force and we created work teams on each of these 10 indicators uh, and these teams are composed of government agencies and private uh, sector partners. Uh, we worked, uh, we did video conferences with IFC to figure out and study the, uh, the indicators and then we, set, we got down and designed and implemented reform targets by benchmarking against the ASEAN countries. So, for example, uh, we took a look at the starting a business. Uh, the current number of steps and days to start a business, uh, 16 and 36 is the current um, uh, uh, practice. Uh, we want to be able to move this down to eventually, uh, uh, the Malaysia standard is uh, three steps and six days. The Singapore standard is three steps and three days. So uh, we've given the work team uh, two years uh, to get to that uh, number, okay? Three and six, given them two years. This year, this is what they have done so far. They've taken it down to 11 and 11 from 16 and 36. I'm giving you these numbers because I want you to know, or I want us to know, that if you go through the incorporation process and it takes longer than 11 steps in 11 days, please let us know so we can get back to the work team and tell them their system is not working. But let me show you what they have done. Uh, this is the flow chart of the red tape that you go through from start to finish, all 16 steps that you need to go through. We have told them to make the necessary cuts for this year and then more cuts next year. So this, are, this goes in two phases. Uh, evolution and revolution. What we're showing you is evolution because it's basically a manual cut to, to speed up the process and hopefully cut the corruption. And uh, next year they have to go and automate and really take the revolutionary step and just re-engineer this, this process. So what they've done is they've cut out uh, five of the steps and, 
uh, speed it up on the remaining 11. So that is now a, a shorter process, and we want to shorten it further next year. So if you want to take a look at all the other steps, I won't show the flow charts, but if we take a look at construction permits, it is uh, 29 steps and 84 days. That's been cut down to 17 and 61. Getting electricity is 5 and 50 steps and days. That's been cut down to 4 and 36. Registering property uh, has 39 days. It's been cut to 23. Paying taxes. Now, paying taxes uh, includes here your payment to SSS, uh, PhilHealth, Pagibig, uh, which you uh, do over the course of a year. So you actually, most people don't count it, but you actually, companies go through 47 forms of payment because you have monthly payments and, and quarterly payments and so on and so forth. Uh, we've been able to cut that down to 14 by uh, moving an automation on some of these steps. Uh, now, on the simplification, uh, those of you who go through the pain of a business permit, uh, the so-called mayor's permit, uh, there's a program called Business Permits and Licensing System. The idea is to streamline this uh, system down to less than five days, less than five steps, uh, down to a single form and two signatures. Uh, in the past, this has taken maybe 10, 12, 15 days to do it. Uh, you go through multiple, you sign multiple forms or you fill out multiple forms with the same data and uh, as many as eight signatures of government officials to get the job done. The new standard, or the old standard, I would say, is five, five, one, and two. And I have uh, advocated that we take the five down to uh, three or fewer days, because we know some cities can do it. As of March 2013, 926 LGUs have gone through this program, streamlined their LGUs, and our target is to finish all of them by 2016. Now, it's not that I don't trust the LGUs, but that's what they're telling us. So we engage in customer satisfaction surveys to find out, is this really happening on the ground? So uh, we've conducted these uh, surveys every January and February, the peak season for mayor's permits. And we want to ask the customers what's happening. So uh, this is the 2012 results. Uh, this is, well, this is just one chart. We, we do check how many steps, how many days, how many forms. Uh, how many signatures they, they were asked to get, uh, did, they, uh, did they get a receipt for what they paid, and uh, so on and so forth. So this is just the final chart, and, and we can see that people are getting a little happier with the, with the service, but we want to push it uh, more. In 2013, we took the uh, survey again, but changed the methodology a little bit and, and put it out in, uh, in terms of an index. And these are the scores for the, for the index. So we want to improve on this every year. And again, uh, we ask your cooperation because we need feedback from the uh, business community and entrepreneurs to tell us, are they getting better or are they getting worse? And uh, this is just an idea of uh, some of those with the higher scores. Um, and we keep a list of all the uh, municipalities that we, that we track, all the LGUs. Uh, also on monitoring and evaluation, we work with uh, SWS for the uh, uh, Annual Enterprise Survey on Corruption. This has been done for many years in the past uh, when I was with uh, Makati Business Club and, uh, and with other groups. Now we have uh, shifted the consortium, but we have uh, resumed the, the survey, so it's on its 10th run across these cities, NCR, Metro Angeles, Calamba, Laguna, Batangas, Iloilo, Metro Cebu, Metro Davao, and Cagayan de Oro, Iligan, cities which have a large concentration of, of, of business. And uh, these are the agencies which are covered uh, in the survey, meaning we ask people what's their perception and assessment and experience uh, of corruption uh, with these particular agencies at both the local and the regional uh, level. So what are the findings? Well. Uh, improvement uh, since 2009 and 2012, which is a gap in the survey uh, uh, period. 43% still see a lot of corruption, but it is the lowest since 2000. 41% uh, say almost all in the sector give bribes to win public sector contracts. Quite a high number, but still the lowest since 2000. 33% uh, know of corruption in their sector in the last three months, the lowest since 2006. And when I say, you know, who are the respondents, these are all Philippine businesses. No, no multinationals, two-thirds SME, one-third large. 73% see less corruption now. 
uh, only 3% see more corruption now compared to the previous administration. Remember, the comparison points are between 2009 and 2012. The current survey is in the field, so we will know whether this administration has made improvements last year versus this year. Uh, they have uh, rated the sincerity in finding corruption uh, among 20 institutions. They found 17 have improved. Uh, those that did not were certain city governments, the Supreme Court, and the Comelec. That's between 2009 and 2012. The uh, top four agencies were Office of the President, DOH, DTI, and DepEd. So this is kind of, if you want to see what the, what the five or six year uh, trend looks like in terms of uh, net sincerity. Next slide. And these are DOH, uh, DTI, and Department of Education. So we track it, and of course, if you're familiar with SW, SWS surveys, you have the uh, positive 100 to negative 100 uh, uh, range. Uh, so majority still see corruption cases in court going fairly, but too slowly. And I think this is something that we should keep an eye on in this current case on PDAF, because while they think it's fair, they find it agonizingly slow. Uh, this one, 50% were solicited for a bribe, 50% of businesses, mind you, solicited for a bribe versus 60% in 2009, but reporting of solicitation to authorities remains very low for many reasons. They feel nothing will happen, they're in fear of their lives, so on and so forth. So uh, that's a high number. One in two are solicited for bribes. That is a high number. We need to bring that down. Uh, corruption is less in the private sector. Naturally, private sector guys are answering the survey, so that's an expected response. But it is serious and worse, it has not improved over the last several years. While the government has improved, the private sector has not. It is low and steady. Okay? Uh, they say the success in fighting corruption will make them more profitable, but they're not helping much to invest in the fight against corruption. We want the business community to make a greater investment in this. Uh, the extent of honest business practice is unsatisfactory and not improving. And uh, proof of this is in the number of people who don't pay the proper tax, who don't issue receipts, who don't ask for receipts, and who uh, keep uh, multiple sets of books. Uh, but yet they recognize prospects have never been better, and executives give much of the credit to the national government, not to the LGU, for the uh, better prospects. Now on the area of transparency, uh, just to show you quickly, there is a program that we have worked on with DBM on uh, transparency of uh, lump sum appropriations. Okay, so PDAF is included here and other lump sum. This is on a website, dbm.gov.ph, and if you look for these buttons, the first one, the e-fund releases, you will find out how much the senators and the congressmen are getting in PDAF. So, for instance, you can get it alphabetized. Uh, senators and district representatives, and it, you'll notice that the data is quite updated. This is uh, for the first half of 2013. Okay. Then you can click on a name and drill down to their specific projects. So we encourage people to go to dbm.gov.ph, get all the data if you want to research on how your money is being spent, or our money is being spent. There's also the Budget Nang Bayan uh, website, which will show you the breakdowns of the, uh, how the budget is being allocated um, in the, uh, across agencies and across different uh, regions. A very useful website, and uh, this is, uh, you can find this under budgetnangbayan.com, uh, put together by DBM. And finally, I want to close with uh, money laundering. Uh, with money with, with pork barrel, because that is a form of reverse, what I call reverse money laundry. In traditional money laundering, of course, you start with dirty money and you make it clean. In uh, pork barrel, we start with clean money and we make it dirty. And uh, this is a, a form of reverse money laundering that I think we need to, to clean up. What should be done? I think certainly we need to be looking at freezing accounts, uh, auditing, obtaining bank records, including all the NGOs involved. Um, I was a bit horrified this morning. I picked up the newspaper, Philippine Star headline, NGOs still active. The same NGOs on the list are still in business. I think we cannot allow that. Uh, we should, of course, investigate and prosecute, and I might add, we should convict. Okay, we should convict. Uh, remember what the SWS survey is showing us, People are ha feel the cases are moving fairly, but they're moving slowly. Um, I think it's uh, timely that the uh, Magsaysay uh, awardee 
uh, for anti-corruption is KPK of Indonesia, which has a terrific uh, record on uh, conviction. So I think that's something we should learn from them, how they convict so many. Uh, I'd like to see uh, some energy channeled, uh, the energy against PDAF, also channeled to vigilance and monitoring of the entire budget, including the LGU budget. Uh, PDAF is 1% of the national budget, so imagine if we channel that vigilance to the, fi to the other 99%, I think then we're going to get uh, some, see some, uh, uh, something done positively. And uh, I think we really should tighten rules for accountability and install more transparency measures on all public uh, spending. I think there's a great opening with this particular case, and uh, I have a great deal of faith in the uh, three, uh, the so-called three furies, the Ombudsman, the Secretary of Justice, and the Commission on Audit, uh, to, and the EAGSI to, to get the job done. And I, I think that uh, this could possibly be a game-changing uh, event if handled properly, but I must say it must be handled quickly. Uh, I don't think uh, we can wait two or three years for cases to be filed and uh, prosecuted. I think uh, the sooner the better, uh, as far as we're concerned in the business community, so lessons will be learned. Uh, thank you, and I'll be happy to answer your questions a little later on.